learning guide for solving rational equations. Laura and Jared can paint a room in 42 minutes if they work together. When Laura works alone, she can paint a room 13 minutes faster than Jared can when he works on his own. How fast can Jared paint a room? So I want you to set up a table similar to the one that I've set up here. You're going to have one column for the fraction of the room that they can paint per minute and one column for time. And you're going to have three rows, one for Jared, one for Laura, and one for them working together. Now it says that the time they work together is 42 minutes. So we're going to put 42 in the time for them working together. Then it says that when Laura works alone, she can paint a room 13 minutes faster than Jared. So if we give Jared variable j for his time, then we could say that Laura does it in j minus 13 minutes because she's 13 minutes faster, so that's 13 less minutes than it would take for Jared to do the work. Now we're going to come up with the fraction of the room that they complete in one minute. Working together, they can complete one out of 42 parts of the room in one minute. When Jared's working, he can complete one divided by j fractions of the room per minute. And when Laura's working by herself, she can complete one out of j minus 13 fractions or parts of the room per minute. Whenever you see the word per, you kind of want to think of the word of a division or a fraction. So it's the amount that they can total, do in total divided by the total number of minutes. Now we can set it up and say that, well, the time that it, or the amount Laura can get done in one minute plus the amount Jared can get done in one minute should be equal to the amount that they both together can get done in one minute. Now we have a rational expression. So we just have to solve using the rules that we've learned. We're going to find the lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator is all the factors on the bottom that are unique. So j minus 13 is a unique factor, j is a unique factor, and 42 is a unique factor. Therefore, our lowest common denominator is going to be j minus 13 times j times 42. Now we're going to multiply this by each term. Now, if we're multiplying by 1, we don't actually have to include the 1. So we have 1 times j minus 13 times j times 42 divided by j minus 13. Remember, when you're multiplying on both sides of the equation, you only need to do it to the numerator, plus j minus 13 times j times 42 divided by j and all of that should be equal to j minus 13 times j times 42 divided by 42. Now the purpose of a lowest common denominator is that we end up cancelling, getting rid of our denominator. So you'll see that the factor j minus 13 cancels in the first term the factor j cancels in the second term, and the factor 42 cancels in the third term. And now we're left with no more fractions. So I'm going to just write 42 times j. I'm going to put the 42 in the front because I like when my coefficients go in the front. We have 42 times j minus 13. So we're going to use the distributive property, and we're going to write this as 42j minus 546. And this is all equal to j times j minus 13, which is going to give us j squared minus 13j. Now, because this is quadratic with a degree of 2, we need to get everything to one side so that, and so that we're left with 0 on the opposite side. So I'm going to first combine my like terms. 42j and 42j is 84j minus 546 is equal to j squared minus 13j. And now I'm going to bring my terms to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 84j from both sides. 
so that I'm left with 0j on the left and I'm left with 90, negative 97j on the right. So I'm left with j squared minus 97j is equal to negative 546. Now I'm going to bring the 546 over because it's a negative. I'm going to add 546 to both sides. So that I'm left with 0 now on the left. 0 is equal to j squared minus 97j plus 546. Now I need to solve for j. So I'm going to use PSA. You can use the quadratic formula, especially if you don't like working with big numbers. You can always plug these numbers into your quadratic formula. Or you could graph and find the zeros as well. In this case, I'm going to use my PSA. So I have 546 as my product and negative 97 as my sum. Now I've worked it out so that negative 6 times negative 91 is equal to five, positive 546 and negative 6 plus negative 91 uh, adds to negative 97. So negative 6 and negative 91 are my solutions. And I'm going to put them into back into my factored form. j minus 6 and j minus 91. Remember that if I was to multiply this back together and check, it should get me back to my original quadratic equation. So now I know that either j minus 6 is equal to 0 or j minus 91 is equal to 0. So I need to solve each one for j. I'm going to add 6 to both sides so I can isolate j by itself. And I'm left with j is equal to 6. Or I can add 91 to both sides in this equation. And I'm left with j is equal to 91. Now one of these values does not make sense because we know that Laura paints the room 13 minutes faster than Jared. Therefore, if Jared's time is 6 minutes, that means that Laura's painting the room in negative 7 minutes, and that doesn't make sense. So this would be an inadmissible value because it doesn't make sense in the context of the question, which means that Jared must paint the room in 91 minutes. So let's complete it with a sentence. Jared can paint the room in 91 minutes. And don't forget to always include your non-permissible values. Okay? Because we had j in our denominator and j minus 13 in our denominator, we know that our non-permissible values would be j cannot equal 0 and j cannot equal 13.